Every area, every region, every place has something of its natural phenomena which is terrifying, a natural phenomena that we can't control on our own despite our best efforts. Living here in Indiana, that natural phenomena seems to be tornadoes, right? This, this blast of wind that forms this storm which comes up seemingly automatically without warning, with, with limited ability to prepare, that, that wind which can blow everything, life and limb, home and possessions away. You know, some places may have earthquakes. Where I lived, as, as many of you know, where I lived before our family moved here, we lived in southeast Virginia where that natural terror was hurricanes. Now, the amazing thing with a hurricane is that you know it's coming. At least where we were at there in the Virginia coastal area, in the Tidewater area, you knew a hurricane was approaching. In fact, they would be in the newspapers, they would be at stores, maps, where you could actually plot the track of a hurricane, and you did such things, right? You watched it on the news, and because where we were at, Unlike, say, Puerto Rico, unlike the Bahamas, unlike Caribbean islands, where we were at, you would see the hurricane coming, you would judge its path, and you would make decisions. Is it going to be safe to stay? Will it miss us? Will it come to us? Should we leave? Should I board up my house? Should I take the dog? Right? All of these sorts of things, right? You know, because you saw the storm coming and you could make choices, or at least you hoped you could. Early in our time, early in our time of living in Virginia, there was this one hurricane. Perhaps the, it was the first major hurricane that we experienced while we lived there, Hurricane Floyd. And never having lived through a hurricane, we watched this, we, our family made choices, we decided, we followed the path, we decided that we would stay at our home because we thought it would be safe. And so the storm came, the storm came, and it was a huge storm, lots of wind, lots of water, lots of wave surge. Right? We, I, we remember that our family, our children who were young then, we would look out the front door, we would see out the window of the front door this small tree, this cherry tree that we had planted just that spring, and I remember the children saying out, looking out at the tree and saying, hang on, little tree, hang on, as we saw the wind whip around. And there was this moment, but there was this unique thing about that particular storm that we experienced that is kind of rare, that the eye of the storm came over our community. And it is true that as a, the eye of the hurricane, if you happen to be in the midst of it, right, you, you have this ferocious storm whipping around on you, and then suddenly everything stops. The sky doesn't completely clear, but the wind stops, the rain stops, and this happened over our house. The track of the storm literally, as we followed the map, literally passed almost directly over our house. And the storm stops, and slowly you see all of your neighbors kind of coming out, and everybody looking around at everybody, everybody okay? How's your house? Everything fine? And then suddenly you start to feel the wind coming from the opposite direction as the storm begins to whip back around you. And you go back into your house, and again, you're looking out the window, and you're saying with the kids, hang on, little tree, hang on. Right? It's kind of like that, to live through that sort of hurricane. You know, in a hurricane, it is this sort of calm, and then a storm, and calm, and a storm, and then clean up, and next year, or the following year, or later in the season, repeat that sort of same thing, calm, storm, calm, storm, clean up, repeat. And not only are we in hurricane season now that we, you know, this might have some resonance as we hear the news, but, but if you look at St. Matthew chapter 14, it's like hurricane season because we begin chapter 14 with 
the beheading of John the Baptist. And then we had Jesus healing and the feeding of the 5,000. And now again, we have the story of a storm, very specifically with the disciples and Peter on the water and feeling the waves and feeling the terror. And then there's the calm. And then when the story picks up again, it will be an image of Jesus healing people again. Again, this sort of storm, calm, storm, calm, clean up, go again. Right? This, this rhythm of happening. And, and we think that maybe that might be the story of our lives, right? We, right we're, we know storms come. Sometimes we see them, sometimes we can plan for them, sometimes we can't, right? We have this mighty storm of a pandemic on top of us, and then the, the increased wind of unemployment and people losing jobs, and the increased wind of people dying and being very sick, and, you know, and it is as if we are on our little boat, right, experiencing the wave tossed back and forth, we're all tempted to say with Peter, you know, Lord, bid me come to you. Lord, bid me peace and strength. Bid me life. Right? You know, everybody wanting to be a hero or at least safe and these things as they happen to us, right? Back and forth and back and forth. Right? One of the things we learned when we lived in Virginia is that you can... Early on, you can make choices, right? You could choose to stay or to leave. Early on, you can make the choice to put plywood on your windows or not. Early on, you can make choices to pack up the lawn furniture so it doesn't get thrown on or leave it out there, right? There, there comes these moments when you actually can make a choice and you feel the storm coming. But then there comes that moment when you can't make a choice any longer, right? We see that played out in the news during storms. People who stayed and you're just like, oh, what were they thinking, right? But we know they had this choice. And that feels a little bit like the world we live in, right? We feel like we, you know, we have choices until that moment comes that we don't have choices. And that's when the terror comes, right? Peter let me come to you. And it feels okay while I'm walking across, and then suddenly I'm sinking, and I realize maybe I made the wrong choice. You know, Lord, be with me. And what we hear, even though we hear Jesus is like, you know, what did you expect? Right? We know Peter doesn't think well. That plays through the story. But what did you expect? And, and that kind of comes back to all of us. You know, why did you have little faith? You know, what do we expect? What do we expect in our world right now as we, as we look out over our world and we, we're trying to figure out where we fit in, what our life means, how do I live, what's my purpose is, right? What does it mean to live in a pandemic? Nobody has done this for a hundred years. Huh? You know, uh, you know, you know, Lord, bid me come to you. And then I feel the waves, and I'm afraid. And, and what we see in that, at least in this story, is that, that Jesus promises to be there with us. Right? Jesus promises to be there with us. That, yeah, even in this crazy story that, that he never says, Peter, you were foolish. You should have stayed in the boat. You know, Peter, you were you know, a glutton for punishment. Why didn't you stay in the boat? Of course you were going to sink. You know, just this, try to live and try to have faith, right? Try to believe that God is here with us. Make our best choices. Think about our neighbors. Think about the other people in the boat with us. Think about our community and know that Jesus travels with us. And to have that faith, and to have that trust and to make good choices when we can and when we find out that we didn't to trust in God's presence in our lives. 
But world life really is like that, isn't it? It's storm and calm and storm and calm. And then we clean up again. And then we live through it all again and storm and calm and storm and calm. And, 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 and that's where we are, right? living in this world, living our lives, being God's people. May God bless us in the midst of the storm that we feel in the world now. And may Jesus give us peace, even in the midst of this, to, to learn and to figure out how to be His people, how to even be a calm in the midst of a storm, knowing that He is present with us as He was present with those disciples. God's blessings to you in your journey through that storm this week, and may you know Jesus' presence, and may it give you peace. Amen.